Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Robert. And this is a mill. This is a typical knee mill. The workpiece is secured to the table, often using a vise. The table can be moved in the X direction and in the Y direction using these two handles. The X and Y position are shown on the digital readout. The table sits on top of the knee, which can be moved in the vertical direction by turning this handle. The upper portion of the mill is referred to as the head. Tools are inserted into collets. Collets can then be installed into the spindle. The spindle is within the quill. The quill can also be moved in the Z direction. The spindle is powered by the motor. This switch here controls the motor. The emergency stop can be pressed to stop the motor. Robert will now display proper mill operation. Begin with a block of aluminum approximately a quarter inch longer than the desired final length. Clean the part, vise, and parallels to ensure they are free from metal chips and other debris. Place parallels of the desired height in the vise, and then place the part on top of the parallels. Tighten the part in the vise securely. Applying too little force on the vise handle will result in the part being pulled out of the vise while cutting. Install a half inch end mill into the collet, then place the collet into the spindle. Press the in button to tighten the collet into the spindle. On the right side of the mill, turn the red switch to the on position, then press the green button to turn on the machine. Turn the spindle on. Confirm that the tool is spinning in the correct direction. For this half inch end mill, cutting aluminum, adjust the spindle speed to 1200 RPM. In the event of an emergency, press the large red button to stop the spindle. On the first side of the block, Remove enough material that the bandsaw marks are gone, leaving a flat surface. Do not remove more than 100 thousandths in one pass. The finishing pass should be made in the climb direction with a depth of about 10 thousandths of an inch to produce a good surface finish. Remove the part from the vise. Use a deburring tool to remove burrs from the newly machined edges. On the second side of the block, again remove enough material that any marks from the bandsaw are gone. Adjust a pair of calipers to the desired length of the part, then zero the calipers.
deburr the part, then measure it to determine how much material needs to be removed. In this case, 122 thousandths need to be removed. Turn the digital readout on, and then zero the x-axis. The first roughing cut will be approximately 100 thousandths, the maximum amount that should be removed in a single pass. The second roughing cut will be approximately 12 thousandths. This will leave 10 thousandths for a finishing pass. For the finishing cut, move to the final depth of 122 thousandths. Again, the finished cut is in the climb direction with a depth of approximately 10 thousandths. Deburr the part, then check the length using a caliper. Remove the part from the vise and finish deburring. To remove the collet and end mill from the spindle, the quill must be fully retracted and locked in position. Press the out button to release the collet and end mill. Hold the end mill to prevent it from falling. Finish by returning tools and cleaning the machine.